What's going on guys? My name is Andy and welcome to Anime Kitchen. Today we're going to be focusing on an anime called Shokugeki no Soma, also known as Food Wars in the West. Uh, this show revolves around the main character Yukihiro Soma entering into the most prestigious culinary school in Japan, Totsuki Academy, and his journey to become the best chef within that school so that he can eventually take over his family business once he's graduated. Today's recipe was actually inspired by a contest from Shokugeki no Soma itself and also by Crunchyroll where we'll be challenged to create a dish which uses apples as a secret ingredient. So join me today as we make a spiced apple milfway with apple gel, meringue, chocolate soil and burnt caramel ice cream. Let's go. For our chocolate soil you'll need to thoroughly whisk together caster sugar, almond meal, plain flour, cocoa powder and a pinch of salt. Follow that with your melted unsalted butter until the mixture is all hydrated and you achieve a mealy consistency. Spread this mixture over a lined baking tray and bake in an oven preheated to 150 degrees Celsius for 10 to 15 minutes, stirring at 5 minute intervals. Remove from the oven when it's ready and then set aside to cool until you're ready to use it later on. Okay, so next up we're going to be focusing on the burnt caramel ice cream base. Unfortunately, when I first conceptualized this dish, I wasn't planning on making a video for it, so I haven't actually recorded the process of making the base as this was done a day ahead of time. However, I have included the full recipe and measurements for everything in this video in the description box below so that you can make this at home. If you do want a video tutorial on how to make the ice cream base in the future, please let me know in the comments. While I can't demonstrate making the base for the ice cream in the video, at the very least I can guide you through the process of turning it into actual ice cream. To do this, the burnt caramel base will need to be churned. You could do this with an actual ice cream machine if you have one handy, but in my case I have the ice cream maker attachment for my KitchenAid in the freezer overnight. Pour the base into your ice cream machine of choice and churn it on a medium speed for around 15 to 20 minutes or until it reaches a thick and luxurious soft serve consistency. Once it gets to that point, you're going to want to transfer this into a bowl and then cover your beautiful ice cream with some plastic wrap. Leave this in the freezer for a minimum of 4 hours, preferably overnight so that will be nice and firm when we need to work with it later on. Now if you're feeling extra ambitious and have a load of free time, you can make puff pastry from scratch, but considering how much effort and time this dessert already demands, I think using the store bought stuff is perfectly fine and will yield an equally good result. Simply divide the puff pastry sheet into four equal pieces and dock with a fork, then sprinkle it with sugar on a lined baking tray. Cover this with an additional layer of baking paper and weigh it down with a second tray. This is required to stop the pastry from rising too much as it bakes and will help you to produce a compact and crisp pastry sheet. Bake this off at 200 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes, then remove the top tray and the paper. Bake for an additional 5 or 10 until it is nice and golden brown all over. Remove it from the oven once it reaches this point and set aside to cool for later use. So for the stewed apples, I'm actually going to recommend that you don't do what I do in this video and instead listen to the instructions I'm about to give you instead. So you're going to want to melt butter in a large frying pan over medium heat and then rather than using a large chunky apple like I'm using here, you're probably going to want to dice this up into about a one centimeter cube so that it cooks a bit faster and also it's going to be easier for you to construct later on. Also, unlike what I just did in this video, make sure that you actually add in the cinnamon stick and the star anise ahead of time when the butter is melting so that it incorporates more of the flavor from the spices. Either way, cook the apples for about six to seven minutes until they're almost cooked. And at that point, you can add in a cornflour slurry and brown sugar and cook them all for an additional two minutes until you have a nice thick sauce and the apples are just barely cooked but have a little bit of bite in them in the center as well. Next, we'll put our focus onto the Italian meringue. To begin with, we will be combining white sugar and water into a small saucepan over medium heat. It's very important to note here that you do not stir the sugar syrup as agitating the syrup will result in the whole thing crystallizing. It's a pain to clean and you'll have to redo the syrup anyway. So just give the pan a swirl every now and then if you think it needs it, otherwise let it do its thing. Using the sugar thermometer, you want to track the temperature of the syrup until it reaches 115 degrees Celsius. While the syrup is coming up to temperature, you can get started on whisking your egg whites to soft peaks, meaning they will look pale and airy and stick to your whisk but will droop when you lift it up out of the mixture. Once the syrup is up to temp, slowly drizzle the syrup into your bowl while constantly whisking until you achieve stiff peaks and your meringue looks nice and white and glossy. 
I chose the style of meringue for this recipe as the heat of the sugar syrup will actually cook the egg whites as it's being whisked together so you don't need to worry about eating raw eggs in this dessert. I also found from personal experience that this meringue is quite stable and will hold its form for a few hours ahead of time if you wanted to make this in advance. As you guys can see here, the meringue has now been beaten to a stiff peak so it's all beautifully white and glossy. At that point, you can transfer this into a piping bag and reserve for later use. Next up, we're going to prepare our cooled pastry sheets for assembly. The two things you'll need for this here is a long serrated knife and a bit of patience. Using a gentle sawing motion, tidy up the sides of your pastry to create well-defined edges and then divide the pastry sheets into two even rectangles. While this step is definitely a bit finicky, being able to eat all of the offcuts is definitely an added benefit as the pastry is extremely crispy, as you're about to hear. Okay guys, and so now that we've prepared all of our components for this dish, we're just about ready to assemble. We've got our puff pastry sheets, which have been nicely trimmed down to size, our stewed apples have now completely cooled and we've cut them into bite-sized chunks for ease of assembly. We've strained off the caramel sauce that was used to cook the apples in and we've allowed that to cool and thicken up. Next I've got a simple apple jelly, which like the ice cream base I made the day before and didn't record the process, so the recipe for that is down in the description below. Then for garnish, we've also got some lemon thyme for a pop of colour and some slices of Granny Smith apple. Finally we have a meringue on the side in a piping bag as well. To assemble our meal foie, we'll first start by using a pastry brush to create a nice line of caramel sauce on the plate. Next, add a small dollop of meringue to keep the first pastry sheet in place. In a zigzag, we're going to pipe our meringue into little swirls or dollops, whatever you prefer, and then give them a quick blowtorch for some added colour and flavour. Fill in the alternate gaps with pieces of the stewed apple, and then finally we're going to fill in some of the smaller gaps with pieces of our apple or jelly, just cut them down to size as you need. Then we're going to repeat this process two more times, but alternate the size where you pipe the meringue and place the apple so you get alternate patterns on each level and also when you look at the dessert from the side. To garnish the meal foie, we'll be using a few slices of fresh green apple. This will bring some tartness to the dessert. Following that, we'll sprinkle on a few sprigs of lemon thyme, which will add both a pop colour and some citrusy and earthy flavours. To finish off everything, we're going to bring back in our chocolate soil that we made earlier and add a tablespoon of that next to the meal foie, making a small space for the ice cream to rest in. Using a warm spoon or ice cream scoop, place a scoop of the burnt caramel ice cream onto the chocolate soil and we're finally ready to eat. If you've made it to the end of this video, thank you very much for supporting this nerd in his pursuit of starting a YouTube channel. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about the video and how I can improve this content in the future. Drop a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more anime food in the future. Until then, keep on cooking.